about 15 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, Tech for Agri is a social enterprise using media and journalism to support the agri sector. This morning, we're going to be talking to two people about the project and a unique tool which is used to create a unique learning and visual experience. Joining me this morning in studio is agri journalist and creator of Tech for Agri, Mr. Karen Bascom. And joining us on Zoom is the managing director of Science Based Initiatives, Mr. Steve Maximi. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. <laughs> of course. Good morning, very, Steve. Very How good are you? Very good, boy. I'm great. Thanks. Nice. So I'm going to kick it over to uh, Karen first because I want to know about Tech for Agri. Tell us a bit about the project. All right. Well, Tech for Agri is a social enterprise. We were established in 2011 as a blog and then grew from there in the international sphere. We kept building our skills in agri journalism and agri media and agri communications. And these are viable career choices outside of the Caribbean. You can go to school for it and even specialize in beef communications or something like that and we just built our own skills in practice mm -hmm. and we're able to network with a number of entities and really build my skills as an entrepreneur as well and so with all of that we established tech for agri as a social enterprise that uses media journalism and communications to support the agriculture sector so you are an agri journalist yes tell me a bit about yourself so well um i'm very determined because um, early on, when I first started that blog, we were talking about technology and innovation in agriculture. And we were the first entity to start doing that. And we're still, even to this day, if you Google us, you will find all our previous work. I'll be a lot bigger and with a lot more hair on my head and with my glasses. <laughs> but the work is there, and that's what I actually got accustomed to. Yeah. When I do my work, I actually see the results, like we follow social analytics. Mm -hmm. We see the results on the computer and in person. And we uh, really am determined to say, okay, let's build this as a viable career choice and have options for our young persons instead of what is usually available, mm -hmm. as well as build businesses in the agribusiness space because we need a multitude of jobs to facilitate our economy with the state at this, at this point in time. Steve, I'm coming over to you because I wanted to know your, um, how did you want to partner, why did you want to partner with this organization, and what are some of the things that you hope to achieve throughout that partnership? Oh, great. It's my pleasure, absolute pleasure to, to endorse, endorse Karen, to endorse Tech for Agri. Um, most of us can pick a winner at the finish line. But I think I pride myself on being able to pick winners from very early on. So from very early on, uh, I tried to support what Karen was doing in Tech for Agri. I have dedicated my career to uh, technology and agriculture regionally. So I just want to endorse what he's been doing as an intergenerational mentor, if you like, as somebody as a dinosaur willing to work with these young people in your new know, tech fields. And in terms of the wider Caribbean, because I've been lucky enough to work in every Caribbean, every Caribbean country, and I can tell you the validity of what Karen, what Karen has developed. Yeah. Now, listening to you, it seems as if you have a wealth of experience. Share with us some of the experience that you can bring and even some of the things that you can share with Karen. Well, I, I am assuming that the wealth of experience has, has something to do with how old I look, right? <laughs> but um, if, if, I, if I ignore that, then... Clearly, I've, I've worked in each Caricom country in all areas of agriculture, but I've specialized in climate smart agriculture. And I would have interacted with Karen very, very early on. When all this talk about digital agriculture came about, I wrote an article for the uh, Caribbean Newsweek type magazine, which I, in which I highlighted some of the key players in this new digital agriculture. And Karen was one of the people I mentioned. And I also mentioned that in terms of career choices, that we have to be utilizing our head space. When land space is limited, as it is in the Caribbean, in most Caribbean island territories especially, then head space has to be expanded. And I think that these young, vibrant people have to be dealing with not just digital agriculture in terms of developing processes and so, but in terms of how they are able to broaden markets by being able to spread your wings across the entire Caribbean and indeed globally. So that um, I'm here, as I said, as a cheerleader to endorse what Karen has been doing, but I really think we need to focus on, on his product and how 
appealing this 360 uh, immersion technology can be. Yeah. Sorry, Kimberly. Yeah. No, no, no. That's fine because I actually wanted to switch gears to the 360 tool. So, Karen, tell us about that tool and tell us how it's going to help us in the agri sector. All right. So, Tech for Agri 360 is where we are using 360 degree video and our agri journalism skills to produce an immersive visual experience. So, 360 video allows you to see in any direction. And um, should I show it now? Or yeah, you I? can. Yes, okay, let's sure. do it. All right. So, what we do is we have. But is there something? It's on your phone. Yes. Oh. So that's the key to it. Mm -hmm. Right now, each and every person in the country already has a third of the product, which ensures that the cost can stay down and ensures that it's affordable. Which is what, the phone? The, yes, your phone. Right, the, okay. the, everyone has the most expensive part. <laughs> yes. The other two parts are the VR headset. So this is our final product here. Right. Where should I? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Final product here. Um, let me, I can take it out yes, and show please. you. Mm -hmm. All right, and then once you remove it from its sleeve, I gave this to my nephew and he figured it out in a one. <laughs> uh, you simply place the center bracket in. Right. All right, and then you go ahead and pull up your oh, okay. content that we would send to you. Yes. So we produce the content and send it to you. Yes. And we provide this on a subscription basis. Okay. So what would you like to see, vertical farming or aquaculture? Let's see vertical. No, no, aquaculture. aquaculture? I think, yeah, aquaculture okay, I think is interesting. <laughs> Let's right. see how we can see that, yeah. All right. So here we go. <laughs> I pull up. So what you're saying is, if it is I buy into this product, you will send me the subscription, mm -hmm. but I will have to purchase the goggles as well. Yes. Yeah, okay. But it, it comes in a package, right. and the overall cost is two twenty. Right. And we are basically the price of a textbook. Okay. But we offer quite a whole lot more than that. Mm -hmm. So we send you videos like this, where you can actually interact with the video. Mm -hmm. 360 video allows you to see in any direction. Right. I don't know if um, you're seeing that there. Is they able to pick it up? All right. Should be able to. And yes. you can also, as I said, interact with the video in a number of ways. Oh, here we go. And then when you switch that video to headset mode, sorry, when you switch that video to headset mode, you take it and then you place it into your VR box. So. This is how it's going to work. Right. Once you have it there, you place it to your face and you immerse yourself in the environment, mm -hmm. looking around in any direction, even behind you. Right. Right? There's also audio prompts as well, but for now you can focus so on what sort what the of, visual is. What sort of content is on well, what sort of content am I going to purchase when I buy the subscription? Right. So we are specifically using this technology to stop the educational disruption that we are facing. Right. It doesn't matter what the problem is now. It could be the pandemic, it could be the climate, mm -hmm. it could be whatever economic troubles. We know that school doesn't always happen, physical school. So we are saying whether the children are at home or at school or wherever they are, mm -hmm. they can access a stable digital resource, which home doesn't have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. We actually checked it out and researched it, and that during the pandemic there was a drop in the access to, and access to and equality in getting, in quality education, or accessing it. Now, Karen, one of the things you mentioned is what home doesn't have um, a phone, but then some homes don't have internet. And so, is there ever going to be something where, for example, can you download this and save this to watch at a later date, or is it always going to need internet access to access these videos? At this stage, it does need internet access. Mm -hmm. However, the Caribbean region, that's one thing we do have, have very, very high mobile and internet access. Even if you don't have internet at home, people know where they can access the internet. Some people may argue in the rural areas that might be a bit difficult, so depending no. on where the towers are. But I understand <laughs> yeah. that this is this is really a start. Steve, I want to come back to you because I'm, 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 I'm looking at, you know, what sort of, where do you see this product going in the future? Well, it's, it's not only in the future. Where do I see it going now? Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, Karen is more or less concentrating on the educational aspects. I'm thinking of the marketing experience as well. Because you're telling people that they can virtually go into a, food, a field and select the type of fruits or vegetables that they're interested in. And that you can have now <laughs> an immersive technology that would facilitate things like smart contracts. We are at a stage now where you can have an arrangement, a contractual arrangement with a supplier, let's say. And if you can then send the supplier or your or your they don't want to advertise any particular brand or so. But if you want, your favorite grocery store can have 
and immersive technology within the market itself. So that by combining technologies, as I said, I don't want to get too techy, but by combining technologies, let's say with QR codes, which is a little code you see on the on a package, mm -hmm. I can I can sell you some cucumbers where if you take your very phone and scan that image, you can at least see how these things were prepared, what type of climate smart technologies were being used, whether it's organic, at least to, 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 to the standard that you're familiar with, so that you have now health guarantees, marketing guarantees, and not just the educational um, uh, component of it as well, but the fact that you can have it as a quality control measure as well. So yeah. that if someone is interested in what kind of practices take place on the farms that are, that are listed as providing uh, groceries in this particular establishment, we can go back now into that fully immersive technology and see how not only how workers are treated, but what, what uh, agrochemicals, if any, are used, what are the technologies employed, etc. I'm telling you that this is, we may no longer talk about cutting edge at, at this stage, but this is really, you know, really top grade stuff. And I, I mean, we already have potential, um, not not just purchasers of the technology, but people willing to partner here in Greater, where I am <laughs> physically right now, and throughout the wider Caribbean. Yeah. So I'm telling you that, uh, you know, without, you know, being too over emotional about it, Karen is onto something really big here. And yeah. I think that and, uh, as, and I, as someone... I, I, I do know that, that Karen also wants to join the conversation and just add something as well. <laughs> Karen, go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. Maxime is being very humble <laughs> but um he is one of those uh, mentors in the agriculture space a steward of the sector yeah. who a lot of young persons would have positive things to say about him mm -hmm. and he he very well understands where where we are at before we started this project we have a long-term plan in place now karen quickly because i know we're almost out of time mm -hmm. uh this is education and, and of course i know that steve has plans to take it further than education mm -hmm. but i know as for now you are seeing the the benefits to remote learning and that sort of thing have you contacted the ministry to see if there's some sort of partnership you know how we can get this into schools because i know that they also, they are also supposed to roll out a hybrid learning pretty soon. Well, um, the minister said that at the beginning of the term. We are now in the second term. This term is carnival. I really don't expect anything. No. However, the ministry is aware. We they've seen it. They were the first to see it because our one of our partners who supported us was already working with the Ministry of Agriculture to get certification for her program mm -hmm. as a principal. Yeah. And they saw it then, and they told us that they didn't have anything in a paid space and that they could only do things pro bono. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. Our long-term plan is to partner with Caribbean Media Corporation, science-based initiatives, and the International Federation of Agri-Journalists to very well take this project global. As you, as Steve mentioned, there, there are so many various applications, and there comes a technical know-how, and that's what we have yeah. after doing this work for so long. Yeah. So we are very well leading the way in this technology and in what we can do and contribute to our agricultural sector and our economy. Yeah. It, it seems as if it's going to revolutionize the system. And so I also wanted to know quickly, what are some of the challenges you are seeing in not just um, in getting the product off the ground, but rolling it out across, especially across the region? So the challenge we had, of course, is raising funds, mm -hmm. but we are able to, you are able to find support outside of the country. We have a network. We reached out. We raised ownership. Then science-based initiatives came in, and we just recently became one of the winners of the Digital Foundation Media Transformation <coughs> Grant. The problem we're having now is accessing financial services. I went to RAN Credit Union, UWE Credit Union, Eastern Credit Union Services, and had heinous, hideous, and horrible customer service. I insist that those CEO and the manager's office and whoever is in charge goes to Google and looks up user interface and user experience, UI and UX. It is high time things are changing. Yeah. There's no right I should be spending hours waiting to be serviced to be then told something that something along the lines of everybody is a slave to somebody right. by your own teller. That's yeah. not how you speak to customers. Well, I do hope that sometime in the future that you do get the funding that you need, because I think it's an amazing no, we, project. No, we do need funding. We have funding. <laughs> we, have we, funding. Are, we, we need services. Yeah. We need a simple services. That's all we need. Yeah. Simple 
services well, that we have at our right B, to. I hope that you're listening <laughs> <laughs> to Karen and yeah. Steve as they try In to bring this amazing online. technology to not just our students, but of course, global. Karen, let me thank you. Steve, online, thank of you. course, let me thank you. And let me thank you as well for believing in this project. And I hope that it's going to do some amazing things in the future. So thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. That, and that was, of course, the Director of Science-Based Initiatives, Mr. Steve Maximi. And, of course, in studio, we have the creator of Tech for Agri, Mr. Karen Bascom, talking about the Tech for Agri 360 tool. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.